Hello everyone, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me. Happy Monday. I have another ghost story video for you today where you will send me your ghost stories to this email just right here and I read them out and create a look based on a way to die. Now listen, we have a very special episode this week because I am filming directly from hell itself. <laughs> now this look today is based on a comment I got on, whoops, on TikTok and it's it's actually based on a comment I get <laughs> a lot, a lot, um, and in messages as well. And here's how I died, right? Turns out being a man and wearing makeup is in fact a sin. <laughs> and it turns out, didn't realize you actually go to hell um, for doing said thing. So here's the deal this person told me this, what they didn't realise is I already live here. <laughs> so today we are doing a red, I wouldn't say demon inspired, but really um, a nice rich reds, really hell inspired, nice warm tones, because that's just life unfortunately. So, so like I said, if this is your first time here, please go ahead. If you have any weird experiences, scary, doesn't have to be scary actually, just weird, strange, they don't have to be paranormal, people are weird too, go ahead and send them to me so I can read them out here. You can send them in a video form, audio form, or you can just write a plain email as usual, however you feel comfortable. Okay, shall we do it? I already have my skin on today because um, I filmed a few videos before and oh my God, my face and my skin is getting so sensitive recently and I just can't keep taking my makeup on and off all the time. <laughs> Actually, you know what? I need to carve out my eyebrows. Then we'll start reading some stories. If you have TikTok, follow me. I'm doing like all my quick little tips and stuff in there. It's a good time. I get to talk to a lot of people and it's really easy to give advice directly back. So join me over there. Okay, let's go. Oh, I'm so excited. I feel like I need a good scare. I haven't been scared in a while. And last week, all I did was cry. <laughs> I'm gonna be using mostly this Beauty Bay. What's it called? Beauty Bay. What one is this? Fiery, ooh, Fiery 2.0. So our first story today is called The Painting Lady. <gasps> People doing things. The scariest thing of <laughs> all. Hi, I'm so sorry for the long email and the bad grammar. English is my fourth language. But here's my free story. Listen, I always say this. You can speak four languages. Four even if, even if it's just like enough to write an email, four languages, you are a genius. Grammar, forget it. I can hardly do English grammar, so good for you. You're smart, don't ever apologize. So in 2014, I was about to finish my last month of art school when the class decided to take a trip to Florence, Italy. I was really excited as it would be my first time ever traveling there. And we were going to see lots of art. It was perfect. We got there on a Monday in the morning and were granted a free day to just explore the local side of the city where our Airbnb was. I weirdly knew the city in and out and could take the small passageways to all the places we wanted to see without ever being there before. I could also understand what the people were saying in Italian without knowing the language, but I thought that was because my native language was similar. So fast forward three days, I noticed that older locals were being weird and whispering and pointing at me. The young ones started nicknaming me Painting Lady. The day we were going to the famous Palazzo Pitti, ooh, as I was walking up the steps to the main floor, I felt like my steps were becoming heavier and heavier. And it was almost like I was dragging something from my shoulders, like a heavy coat. We greet the woman that was showing us around. And when she turns and sees me, she gets this freaked out look on her face. Not thinking anything of it, we start the tour and everything is normal until we get to the hall with three rooms. A blue room, a red room, and a yellow room. Yellow is my favorite color, so I automatically wanted to go there right away. But walking in, I felt like I was having a hard time breathing. I was feeling dizzy and nauseous. So my classmate took me out to sit on a bench. As I started to feel a bit better, I joked with my classmate, telling her how that room probably belonged to me back in the day. She proceeded to tell me that I was probably choked and killed because I couldn't breathe. While joking about this, we didn't see the tall lady coming back with the class. And now she was looking at me even more freaked out than ever before. There were a lot of small incidences that day. 
but let's get to the scariest part. The end of the tour comes and we were in the hallway lined with paintings. I remember that I hadn't taken a picture, so I ran to stand under an arch and gave my phone to my classmate to take one. While holding the phone, she looks up above the arch and drops my phone. One hand on her mouth and the other points at something above me. I turn and look and I shit you not. There is a painting of a lady sitting on a pile of rocks and she looks exactly like me. I, of course, got scared and ran out and never did get to know who the lady in the painting was, but my teacher was told by the tour guide that lady lived in the palace and she was killed. She was choked to death. I hate that, but I love it. Thank you so much. What a horrible story. That's so bad. I love like reincarnation stories. They really get you thinking, um, especially when you see like young kids and they have like memories of someone else. It's like, you're young, how do you know about this stuff? You know? Thank you so much, that was a great story. Next up, we have an audio story and it's called My Dad's Premonition. Hey Robert, my name is Yolanda. I have a story for you that my dad told me when I was younger. He'd always had his sixth sense, but there was one story in particular that's always stuck with me. It's short, but it's really strange. My father grew up in the Dominican Republic during the presidency or dictatorship of Rafael Trujillo. He helped the rebel effort when he was younger, doing little things like printing and sharing the pamphlets and things like that. But when he was a teenager, he came to the U.S. Some of his family stayed, including his cousin, who was more involved with the rebellion. One late night or early morning-ish, my father was laying in bed reading a magazine. He put the magazine down and started to let his mind wander. He liked to meditate and often tried to completely clear his mind. All of a sudden, he saw his cousin appear above him. He immediately snapped out of it, a little weirded out, and got up to go fishing with a family friend as they had previously planned. Once they were out on the boat, he told his friend what happened, and they had turned on the radio to hear the news about what was happening back home. It was at that moment that they announced the killing of several rebels in the Dominican Republic, and they named my father's cousin. The killing had happened very early that morning, right before the vision my dad had had of him. I always thought that was really weird. I mean, yeah, that's the story. Thanks so much for all the good content you put on. You've taught me so much, and I love these Ghost Mondays. See ya. Thank you so much. Oh my goodness me. Isn't it creepy to think, especially things like premonitions, that it is a premonition, <laughs> you know what I mean? I sometimes wonder, you know, these people that get to see like a loved one before, when the moment they pass away and, um, or premonitions like that, I wonder if there's any kind of, I don't know, like, it must be a weird feeling, because it's like, did, did, why did they want me to see them before they went? Before they passed? I think I'll be a little bit like, oh shit, should I, should I have done something? Am I meant to like do some kind of like last, um, you know, do they want something from me? Is that why they've come to me? Thank you so much for that story. I appreciate it. And thank you for sending in a voice um, story. They always give me a chance to kind of like catch up on what I'm doing. So thank you. I appreciate it. Oh, we have a video next. Oh my God. I'm so lucky. <laughs> okay. Hey everyone, I'm having to do a little voiceover here. The story that I was watching here was such a good story, but the audio just kind of wasn't fixable. Um, and it sounds um, really, um, it was making loud, like bang, banging noises throughout. So I'm gonna have to actually skip this one out of the video, but I'm gonna see if I can get this person to tell it again. Um, so I can actually share it with you because it was a really good one. Um, so I don't mean to, um, you know, Tempt, not tempt you, tease you. Anyway, okay, let's get back to the video. Okay, who is next? Oh, it's Marcus. I don't have to do anything today. <laughs> Hi, Robert. I love your video so much. Favourite YouTuber by far. Don't open the photos until you read the story. A year and a half ago, my boyfriend and I went on a road trip to a town called Deadwood, South Dakota. We're from Canada. The town itself is extremely old and has a lot of history. Deadwood thrived during the gold rush days, back when the conditions were pretty rough. A lot of the original buildings are still standing. The whole town has maintained the old wild west theme, so it's a really cool place to explore. One evening my boyfriend and I signed up for a ghost tour of this old hotel slash bar, which was originally a brothel. 
There were about ten of us on the tour. The building was absolutely fascinating, but equally creepy. At one point during the tour, we were all standing in a circle surrounding the guide as she was telling us facts about the building. We were each standing at least four feet apart since the room was so large. As we were all intently listening to the guide, somebody, or something behind me, swatted my ponytail back and forth, twice. I whipped around immediately to see who it was, but there was no one there, just a wall. I looked at my boyfriend and gave him a half scowl. Puzzled by my expression, he asked what was wrong. I told him what happened, and he could hardly believe it. At the end of the tour, I told the guide what happened too. She wasn't surprised at all and explained that there's a spirit of a man who often touches or plays with young women's hair, especially when it's in a ponytail. I'm still creeped out by that. Also on that tour, my boyfriend was taking random pictures in different rooms with the flash on. As it was super dark in there, that night when we got back to the hotel, we looked at the photos to see if we captured any orbs. Now check out the picture I've attached. You can clearly see the creepy mannequin on the bed, but look at the window. You can make out the silhouette of a woman sitting on the window ledge. We couldn't believe what we saw in the photo. The other photo is what we believe to be an orb, but who knows, it could just be dust. The next night we went back to the hotel and actually spoke to the owner and showed him our picture. He believed us and told us that's probably the ghost of a prostitute in the 1800s who jumped out of that exact three-storey window in a suicide attempt. She later died in hospital. She was the same ghost that appeared to the owner one night when he decided to nap in one of the rooms. She was standing at the foot of his bed and scared him so bad that he actually had a full-blown heart attack. Thank goodness he lived to tell the tale. He told us he never spent the night there again. Thanks for reading. Hi Robert, it's me, Marcus. Here's another story called Friendly Ghost Helped My Makeup Business. Hello, lovely. Though I have many spooky ghost stories, the following is my favourite happy one. This happened a few years ago at the Marriott Hotel, Bellevue, Washington. As I did yearly, I was staying at this hotel for a local bodybuilding competition. I had a fully stacked two-day schedule for hair and makeup clients, with no time to spare for myself. Late Thursday night, I arrived at my room, got settled and finished my online work even later. Since I was sharing a room with a competitor who needed as much sleep as possible, I would need to set up my makeup and hair station in the bathroom. By the time I had set up my area, it was about 1.30am. Since my first client was in just a couple of hours at 3.15, I decided that the best course of action was to grab a pillow and sleep on the very hard tile floor. I knew that if I got too comfortable in bed, I'd sleep through my alarm. Friday's clients and schedule went on without an issue, and I was able to get to bed early that night at 11pm but not before washing brushes and leaving them on a towel on the counter to dry overnight. Since my Saturday morning clients would start arriving early again, I needed to be out of bed by 2.15am. I set one quiet alarm for 2.14, quiet enough to wake me but not my roommate. I woke slightly, but immediately started to drift off again. My 2.15 alarm goes off, and I try and pull myself off the pillow, but I feel myself start to slip off to sleep again, and then wham! The unmistakable sound of a metal makeup brush smacking the tile floor breaks the silence. I rush out of bed to see one of my large foundation brushes right in the middle of the bathroom floor. There was no way it could have rolled off the counter. There was no window in the bathroom, no breeze, and the brush had been laid to dry on a flat towel the night before, far from the edge of the counter. I laughed, now fully awake, and thanked whatever spirit made that happen. I spent the morning sharing with every client how there was a friendly ghost making sure I didn't miss their appointment. The brush was a Real Techniques pink stippling, stipple, stippling brush. I heard no rolling on the floor. It was a purposeful slam. Okay, Robert, hope you enjoyed those creepy, creepy tales. Thank you so much. For a second, I thought you said the ghost cleaned your brushes. I was like, get me one. <laughs> okay, our last story for today is called Mystery Nurse. It says, hello, Robert, I'm a new subscriber and I'm loving your content. I too am a fan of Bailey Saren, so when the notification came up for your series, I was so excited. I'm actually a horror writer. Oh my god, I pretty much believe in everything, or at least a possibility. Yes, I always mentioned, and I forgot to add the beginning of this one because I was so in depth with my story. This series is very much based on Bailey Saren's Murder Mystery Makeup Monday. Such a great series. If you haven't watched it, do check it out. I always link her below. Um, I want to share a story that happened to my husband, who is also named Robert, about 15 years ago. 
His best friend, Drew, ended up in the hospital with bacterial meningitis. Robert found Drew unconscious, oh no, in his apartment and got him to the hospital. That must be so scary. The doctor in charge of Drew's case thought he wouldn't make it as he has already been resuscitated twice. He told Robert, a DNR, do not resuscitate, order was in place while they were waiting for Drew's folks to arrive. After that, the doctor walked off and another doctor approached my husband in the waiting area. She got really angry and told my husband not to listen to the other doctor and that the DNR order was not valid because no family had approved it. So my husband talked to the nursing staff and the second doctor was right. That DNR could not be enforced, which is good because Drew actually had to be resuscitated a few more times and was stable by the time his folks arrived. And although it took two months, Drew pulled through. Robert went to talk to the nurses at the main station in the ICU to find out about that woman doctor and to thank her. When he told them her name, they were very confused. No doctor by that name worked in a hospital at that time or ever before that they were aware of. So did a ghost doctor save Drew's life? My husband is a skeptic but he believes that's exactly what happened. If she hadn't shown up, Drew probably would have died that night. Yes, that was a ghost doctor. No other explanation. I won't have any other explanation. That was a ghost doctor. What's with that first doctor though? What a fucking creep. Why would you do that? Can you imagine being a doctor and just being like, yeah, we're not gonna, I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> that was crazy. I love stories like that. I love a helpful ghost, cleaning your brushes, being a doctor, whatever it is they have to do. That was amazing. Thank you so much. Listen, let's hope we all have some kind of useful ghost looking out for us somewhere, right? <laughs> okay, so this is my gone to hell, already been in hell. Who knew that powder pigment could put you in a situation like this? <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me. Like I said, if you have any stories yourself, please send them to uh, this email just right here. Ghost stories, weird stories. You heard what we heard today. Stories like that. Thank you so much for joining me and I will see you very, very soon. Bye.